Don't get too familiar with the church. Don't get too familiar with the system. Don't get too familiar with God. Speak to the Lord. Open up your mouth. Speak to Him. Honor the Lord by singing songs to Him right now. Honor Him by raising your voice. Raising it loud in adoration. In honor to this King that we adore. Like a symphony or an harmony, we would raise you a song. It's a song of life for no other, but the one we adore, Yahweh. Yahweh is the most I got. It's the most I got. Call him his name. Yahweh. Yahweh. The most, the most I got. Oh, Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 the most, the most I got, the most I got. Oh, Yahweh, 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 the most, the most I got, the most I got, the most I got. Oh, Yahweh, Yahweh. So as the instruments play, the saxophone play, just lift your voice loud to heaven, pray in tongues, play more intentional, pray more intentional to the Lord, pray more intentional. So lift your two hands, everyone, to heaven. Just lift your hands. In surrender to the Lord. And just say, Father, I'm open. I'm willing. I'm ready. Let your word come. I'm receptive to your word, Lord Jesus. Look beyond me, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory be to God. Rejoice everywhere. Come on, scream to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, 
we are open and really, really ready for what you're going to say to us. Spirit divine, we ask, oh God, that this vessel will not speak out of place, will not speak out of your word, but will truly speak what Jesus is and who Jesus is, that we all will see Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. So look at somebody next to you and say that I find past you. I will explain, I will explain why. <laughs> so, who believes that you are created in the image of God? Ahead. So, the degree of which you believe that you are created in the image of God, and you know that God is a fine creature, the degree at which you believe it is how you will tell the person, you know I fight past you. <laughs> so, it's not your physical... It's not how your cheekbones are well saturated or how some of you use BS to oppress me in this church. I will not call your names. Or it's the way how some of you, your perfume can send many of us back to where we came from. But I mean, I fight past you. It's, it's, it's what I believe. But it's not a competition, Sean. I've won if it was. Amen. Glory be to God. So we are talking on perfect love this, um, this Sunday. And um, many a time is when it comes to seasons like this in, uh, in the church or rather in the, in the world, everybody is always like, uh, or rather many people are always against the church having to come and, you know, follow the trend of the world to preach on the concept of love. But if you follow my status, I believe that even much more than ever before, it is in seasons like this that the church should amplify the voice of the Bible on such topics so that we don't allow the world to give us <laughs> another topic or I'll be another definition of what love is you know uh, I think the windows posted something on Twitter that um, what was that again uh, sex is not a valentine or was that premarital sex is not what thank God that many of you saw it how many of you believe it if you believe it let me see your hands Jesus Christ. A lot of people's hands are down. If you believe it, let me see your hands. It's always the choir. Amen. I love you all. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, I'm going to touch on some common mis misconceptions. <laughs> Blessing my tongue one day. I want to touch on some common misconceptions on the topic of love. The devil is a liar. I won't have boy in service today. <laughs> Never really get me. So I'm going to touch on some common misconceptions. I'm going to explain what love exactly is and then touch on why scripture, well, gospel according to John, called perfect love, perfect love. So, but first of all, let's touch on the common misconceptions. I would have preferred us to do um, a we write um, what do you think love is all of that stuff but i think next week sunday we can do something as regards that um, so let's look at um, the first misconception so the first misconception here is that it is believed that love is something that just happens to us it just happens to you but here it is written that love is no, is is an intentional decision somebody say love is an intentional decision it's an intentional decision. When somebody tells you, I fell in love with you, tell him, come, let me help you stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if any brother, <laughs> they will drag me today. If any brother or any sister just comes to you and say, I just fell in love with you. you say, hey, yeah. But lady, did you enjoy yourself? Do you need... <laughs> I'm joking, no. Please know when I'm joking. You, uh, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. So let me explain that in John chapter 13, verse 35. John 13, verse 35. If you're there, please read for us. The most I got. The most I got. Who is there? Anybody that is there? John chapter 13, verse 35. All right. By this shall all men know that you are my disciple. Go on. If you have love one to another, continue. 
Mm-hmm. Wait, are you entering 35? That's 36. Okay, please. Just stop at 34. Read it again, 34. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That you love one another. Mm-hmm. As I have what? Loved you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ showed us here that the major criteria or rather the way that men would know that you actually have been with me or you've actually enrolled in the school of Jesus is that love is shown. Not just ordinary love or the love that the world has defined for you but rather the love that I am is shown in you. Uh, Did you get what I said? So many times people can tell you this is what love is. I mean, I listened to a sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman some years back, and it was really profound. He broke down love to four different um, patterns, or rather, four different cadres. He said that love can be seen as commitment, um, sacrifice, right, trust, and what passion. So those four was. How many of you listened to that message? I mean, that message really, really shaked me at some point. So when anybody comes to just tell me anything, I say, it's a lie. You don't love me. It's a lie. That's not love. You just like my... Anyway. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let me, not, let me not touch. He said, a new commandment I give you. I'm using the ESV version. It says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. So the love of Jesus is shown to us that he did what for us. He died on the cross. Scripture records that. And, and I even love this, this song. God in man who died for man and rose as a man. So we give praise to God. Ah, a man who died for man. So owing to the fact that God came as man, died for man, for the sins of man rose as man for man to become or rather for man to even become gods and to have access to god hallelujah so we have that same fellowship we can now access the father because of the love of jesus or because of the love of the father the love of the father is shown in the person of jesus christ i wanted to explain love but i'm 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 already touching on it already so we see that the perfect example of love jesus christ explained to us that see just for you to be able to know that you love somebody else, you must love them as I loved you. How did Jesus love you? Some of you did not like it. So the love of Jesus Christ is shown that he is not selfish. First of all, write it. Selfishness is not seen in that love. He did not think of himself. He humbled himself. In that love, he showed us humility. So, you love somebody else, you are humble towards that person. You are not selfish. You are not thinking of yourself, but you are thinking of that person. The way you speak to that person, you are concerned about how your words would positively or negatively affect that person. Hallelujah. So, I was in church this morning, and uh, we were addressing a certain issue. Then a man from another church, he came and just packed somehow, and was, I think, harassing one of our security men in church Uh, let me even find out the situation was i will tell the story later (laughs) i will tell the story later if it flew from my head but where i was going or where i'm going to rather was that we we see the actions that were shown somebody just came slapped (laughs) and i know this man (laughs) this is our security man glory be to god i know that if he returned that slap that man will have been found in Lassut. Or where is, is it? What's the name of this? It's Lassut, Abi. Igobi. Because they would have needed to help his neck or his bones. As that's the truth. But he came and acted the act of impulse. So you know that you truly love someone. You do not truly love. When certain of these characteristics are seen, you are not selfless. You are not selfish. You are thinking of the other person more than yourself. Right? And I've said it in one of the other misconceptions of this love of a thing that the world has posited to us is the concept of feelings. Many people believe that love is based on feelings. Love starts to a large extent many a times when feelings has ended. Are we together? Amen. Are we here? Come back. Love starts when feelings has ended. 
many of you think that it is when when uh, ah, why do you want to get married i think i've cancelled one or two people why do you want to get married ah, i'm in love with her oh, wow okay because even in relationships many of you that are in relationships you know that love in itself is not even enough there are days where you would want to pack your bag and run away how many of you really understand what i'm saying if you, oh single people are plenty here it is well many of you cannot relate even people that are married there are days where you are like jesus what did i marry it's not even who it is what <laughs> i know uh, okay we are very few married men here and did i say we are sorry they are <laughs> i am la rote amen glory to god very social it remains small all i need to do is open dollar account and send to all of you let's let's finish there let's leave there are we here together uh -huh. so you don't you don't ride I've, I've said it here many times that see eh, feelings does not guide the spiritual man i've said it to you many times so you want to tell me if I'm, if you come to meet me that pastor this is the man i want to marry this is the man i love i love him so much glory be to god i will celebrate your love but there are questions that I will ask you, and these questions are very vital. That's why many of you have not come to meet me with your boyfriend. Because you are still enjoying the feeling. And the pastor boy asked you, are you feeling yourself? Many of you did not get it. But glory be to God that you are not canal minded. Hallelujah. And now some of you now went far. Come back. Come back. You are washed with the precious blood of the Lamb. Are we together? The bed on the fire. <laughs> ah, glory be to God. <laughs> Many of you believe that the concept of love is hinged on happiness. As long as she makes me happy, as long as he makes me happy, he loves me. So any Tom Dick and Harry can come and give you two thousand dollars. You have fallen in love already. That's how some of you are. And I'm not saying that your love language in itself. <laughs> Love God, yeah. I did not see that five love languages in the Bible, no. but anyway, I'm not here to debunk what you people have enacted in your websites or whatever, or in the books that you've read, no. Because I know one thing that does not lead men that are following God it's not philosophical books, it's not the books that men that do not know God wrote about love because they do not know love, they don't know God, they don't know what love is. That's why the ones that wrote about marriage, they are, they, are, they are divorced today. How do you want me to read your book? I was reading one yesterday, I was just laughing. Because by the time I go and Google, ah, divorced. You wrote about the five love. You know, you know, love her as, you know, the way, I say, wow. The concept of sin, let me tell you the truth. The concept of marriage is supposed to mirror the relationship between Christ and the church. That has always been the standard. Though anything I've said it before, anything that is not found in the word of God, should, you should discard it. Anything that is not even patterned after the nature and the person of Jesus Christ, you should what? Discard it. Because that's not truth. Everything outside the person of Jesus, because Jesus is the locus of everything, is the pinpoint, is the center of everything. We know humility because we, we know Jesus. God came down as man. The king of kings came down. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. As man. That's the height of humility. Stripped of all his glory and splendor. Came down as mere man as you are. The ones whom he created. And came to die for you. Died the death of a thief on the cross. He also taught us sacrifice. I know you're writing. Write it down. He also taught us sacrifice. Many of you don't even know how to sacrifice and you're shouting, I love you. You love who? You say you love the Lord, but you cannot sacrifice your time to pray. You say you love the Lord, but you cannot sacrifice your, you cannot even sacrifice your money. Ah, well, when you say you love God, your money is not your money, it's his money. Uh, many of you will not like that. Many of you will not like that. So the man who, by the grace of God, used to help me and dry clean clothes, came to the house yesterday, and he said, ah, please, man of God, then bring all the clothes. I brought everything to him. I said, ah, man of God, do you have any money to give me before I go? I said, ah, this last 1,000 that is in my hand is all free money. And I was so happy at his response. He said, ah, no, 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 it belongs to the Lord. And he left. I was happy. 
I was happy. Because the truth about it is that many people don't even honor God. That 1,000, some of you have thought of many things to buy. Ah, here we are going. Bolly 500 with video make. Ah, he go set that. And that's the truth. You've thought of your belly before God. That's why many of you cannot go far because it's your belly that's been leading you. Let me not touch on too many things before some of you come after me because you are already in my DMs already. Anyway, (laughs) many people believe that you are the concept, one of these misconceptions also on love is that you love those who love you. As long as they love me, I love them. You know, an eye for an eye nonsense. That's not Jesus like. Are we here together? Even if they don't show you the love, you love them. Ah, many of you love expecting love to be reciprocated to you. So your 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 weight of love or your continuity of love is based on the fact that they reciprocate that love to you. So if they don't love you back, you will stop the love. You will be told the love from them. She be should no more follow me. I don't follow talk. That's what she be now. If they carry herself, they go. Am I talking what some of you do? If I'm talking what some of you, they say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is giving you deliverance, Abby. Yeah, deliverance is not only falling down. Deliverance is also in hearing the word. This is deliverance. Because many of you are bound by this nonsense that ideologies that you've carried. And it's in the word that you see the deliverance here. Clearly written, stated well for us. So if you don't love me, I'm not going to love you. If you don't love me, I don't love you. That's not Christ. Did we, did we profess love to Jesus before he came down and died for us? Nah. Nah. Some of you are still knocking at the door of your heart right now. You've not opened your heart. Stone cold heart. Bricked wall. Wall of China. Raised up high against him. That's how many of you. Oh, sorry. 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 Some of you are still trying to you know, break the walls down so that Jesus can come in. It's okay. The king of kings came down for, for the one that he created so that that one can have fellowship, intimacy, koinonia with you. He's standing at the door. He don't dare there. He has been there for long. Standing at the door of your heart, knocking. Allow me to come inside now. He's to help you. God doesn't need you to help him. He needs you to help you. Many people might not believe in what I just said now. But it's very, 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 very key. Because the truth about it is that everything that God has ever done, he has done it with you in his mind. Do you believe that? Okay, some of you don't believe. No, no problem. It's okay. Like Apostle Aruma will say, um, in some of the things that we leave to the Lord. You know. <laughs> You believe that love is not emotional. Uh-huh. Another misconception. Many of you believe that love is based on emotions. No, nah, it's not. It's not just emotions. There's commitment there. On the days where emotions will fail you, the days where emotions will, is the commitment to God. Ah, let me give you a personal. No, 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 no. <laughs> I go hear you later. No. You people will not follow me at Rich House. Let me, <laughs> married people understand what I'm saying. I'll be here together. I'm not married though. I'm just, I'm just saying. The person can be watching on, online like this. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. The greatest expression of love occurred when Jesus, when God gave. Somebody say God gave. You know the Bible verse. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's read it all together. One to go. Aha. Uh-huh. Pause. For God so loved the world that he gave. So the first expression, the greatest expression was him giving his son. Then the only begotten of the father. So he gave. So the question, what is love? What exactly is love? If we've debunked the major misconceptions on love, what exactly is love? 
love is not feelings. You know, love is not emotions. Love is God. Somebody say, love is God. All right, let me let's let's go to First John. Okay, let's let's look at Ephesians four verse fifteen. Let's. Ah, she don't send me text message. I was saying it. Amen. Glory be to God. If you know, you know. All right. Are we here together? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. <laughs> Who is there? Say it again one more time. So we get to see that clearly who the person of love is, and that is who? Christ. Christ. Ah, many of you want me to touch on relationships. How many of you want me to touch on relationship? Ah, Jesus Christ. See your hands highly lifted up. Lift it well with boldness. Uh, you want to touch God? I like you. Leave relationship and touch God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you are saying relationship with God. Okay. All right. Amen. <laughs> a successful relationship or a successful marriage is very simple. Are two of you listening to God? Or are you listening to people? Why? Some of you are saying, hmm, like you'd not know it before. How will you start dating somebody that does not hear God? When your head is touching, God is supposed to be telling you, yeah, calm down. So he's just having more swings. You know, he's just doing, maybe there's no money in his account, so you are just, just telling him everything will be all right. Sometimes, some people just need assurances. Like most, most times, guys, most times also ladies. Sometimes guys think that, oh, when a lady is somehow, somehow, oh, she needs a new wig. Well, most times it's a new wig. Most times. I said most times. Some of you are touching your wig now. Amen. Are we here together? Most, I said most times. Okay, sometimes. So that some of you are not thinking like, ah, oh yeah, hey, hey. are we okay now? Sometimes, that's what, I'm still going to perfect love, but some of you, people, it's like your heart is like, Lord, let him touch on this topic. Okay, I'm just going to help you guys. So that because some of you have already entered relationships and the ship is already shaking one kind. Jesus is not in the boat. So the storms are already waving. So it's obvious that the ship will capsize. But let me just help you. Alright? Listen to this. <laughs> Many of you that are already in marriages that God was not the one that decided the one you married. I'm not, I know some of you are single here. Even the relationship that you are in. God did not decide the relationship for you. You entered and have a God how far. And God is looking like you. I, I don't understand. You don't, dear now. Why are you asking me that? Is he the one? What are you doing there in the first place? I've said it before here, right? That don't enter a relationship without asking God. You enter, you ask God before you enter. Don't enter first, then I ask God. Because the truth about it is that you marry to even love the person. Because the truth about it is, marriage in itself will open your eyes. You think feelings and emotions will be the will help you to keep the marriage. Oh my God! Ask married people everywhere. No matter the counseling and everything that they have gone through, many a times I say this is the truth because I've over the past one to one year, I've intentionally been asking most of the couples that I've met, I've intentionally been asking them some two questions around this because I know say I go so rich my own. But the truth about it is that many people feel like the love they have is enough. And the concept of love that they think is not actually what is love. It's feelings, it's emotion, it's passion. Many of you believe that, oh, that uh, as long as I buy her this, she'll be all right. As long as. Many of you in the relationship that you are in, you enter the relationship, you've forgotten God in the equation. Even if God even joined two of you together, when last the two of you hold hands and pray? Some of you cannot say it. You are saying, oh, this guy is giving me wahala. When was the last time that two of you knelt down and prayed? Now today watch film. And now today chill. It's the truth. Am I lying? No. 
So you are seeing these common loopholes that give some of you problems, even in the relationships that you, you know, you, you saw the convictions that this was actually God. Though some of you, I don't even understand. You know, yet God for other things. His relationship, he had God. Well, let me not shake that table. I've broken. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shall I break it further? You did not hear God on many other things. You did not hear God on so many other things. It was relationship. He heard him clearly. I heard him. A loud, audible voice. He spoke to me, my do- even my left ear. You heard him clearly. You did not, you did not, every, it was that one. So you will know what actually drove it. It was your desires. It was your desires that drove it. It was not the Lord. Some of you don't like this thing. Let me let me continue. I say I should continue. Should I continue? Yeah. <laughs> you are Elohim, Israel. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. You are Elohim, Israel. Elohim Adonai. Ah. Okay. All right. Let's start from from verse seven. Can we start from verse seven? All right. Somebody with a loud voice from verse seven. Loud voice. Mm-hmm. Love comes from where? All right. Everyone who loves is born of what? Say it again. Everyone who loves. So many a times it's not just only holding for Sometimes it's good to have paper Bible so that you'll be able to underline some of you. Uh, well, in your phone you can also take it. Are we here together? Continue. Pause there. Did you let that sink in your spirit? Whoever does not love does not know God. Or say it again. Does not know God. Continue. Because God is what? So do you believe me now that God is love? Love is. Continue. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, do you believe me that God sent His Son to show us His love? So I'm just showing you proofs. Continue. True scripture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 His love is what? If we love one, what is made complete in us? What what do we do that makes love complete in us? loving what is there anybody that you think is unlovable right now just close your eyes probably and think right thing is there somebody that you feel right now that is unlovable to you and only you can raise your hands right now that you feel that you can't just love this person it's okay it's okay i see your hands it's okay it's okay i see your hands it's okay you can put your hands down Continue. Mm-hmm. 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 Amen. Amen. Listen to this. Hmm. Believing and acknowledging makes God make your heart his dwelling place. Believing and acknowledging God makes God make your heart his dwelling place. Are we here together? So many a times you believe but you don't acknowledge. The equation is, is not balanced if you just believe but you don't acknowledge. Now look at this. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. 
can we can we how many of you know that scripture of by heart i think i've said it here many times the hair uh-huh and many of you just trust in the lord with all your heart but to a large extent you are still leaning on your understanding so that's why i said that equation many, many a times you see that oh but i'm doing this you are doing something halfway it doesn't give you good result you cannot say um one is equals to two there has to be a plus one to make it two are we here together so the equation is not balanced if there is not a plus one there so it's said is i mean it's so it's so profound here it says if you believe and you acknowledge that god uh, if you believe and acknowledge god he makes your heart his residence continue please Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perfect love does what so i'm going to touch on perfect love now but can you go back to the um to the verse before then run it through again this is how love is made complete follow among us i have so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment many of you are still scared i mean some of you if you hear trumpet or something some of you think that rapture has happened and you're already scared that hey i did not go how many of you are still scared that you will not go to heaven hmm. some of you want to raise your hand right now it's okay you are like oh who they raise hand who they raise hand listen i posted it yesterday especially those who have handed over their life to christ and have taken the life of christ listen carefully there is no weight of sin that has the capacity to sink you deeper than the mighty hands of god can pull you i'll say that again i posted it yesterday there is no weight even if you have killed somebody there is no weight of sin because i was talking to somebody i was like ah pastor my own is too much don't worry you don't know i say ah I say, Pastor, my God cannot answer my own prayer. Don't let's not waste our time. Pastor, God no fear he me. Waiting, I don't do. Pastor, you never do. I said, Wow. There are some people who believe that there is nothing that God can do. That the blood of Jesus does not have power to wash their sins. It's funny. That's why I say that it's so important that we preach this gospel to the world because it's many people have. Ah, such misconceptions such beliefs there is no way no matter the height the depth or the gravity of your sin it does not especially if you've handed over your life to jesus you believe and acknowledge him there is no weight of sin that has the ability to pull you or ah from the mighty hands of god his mercy can wash you clean if you run to him that's why he said come boldly that's why he said what come boldly the devil wants you to believe that you don't have you don't have the right to come boldly i've shown you guys many times what the devil does to us as believers so when you have you've done i was preaching in last week yesterday so when, when, when you've done something you're like hey i'm not worthy to pray that's why you will not pray and the devil will now make mess of you very well For you to think that you are unworthy, you are too unworthy for you to talk to the Lord, then that is proof that that deception that the devil has pointed at you truly worked on you. And I've showed you very, very well here, at least in the past two Sundays, that one of the major tactics of the enemy, he sent, he was sent here as the great, he's called the great deceiver. That's why scripture was recorded. He said that woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, that the great deceiver has come. That's why when it was recorded that he came down upon the earth the earth tasted of his of his presence the earth was was intentionally in chaos because it rejected such a being are we here together so you understand that the great deceiver is major as one of his one of his major assignments is deception once he can make you not believe what god has told you one two once he can make you also think that um uh, you you are not you are not what god has said you are don't stop lying to yourself 
You think that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? You? Such a great sinner that you are. You, were, you still fornicated yesterday now. You are still planning to do the hookup today. Is it now you that you? God cannot wash you clean. I've spoken to some certain set of people and to be honest with you, I've seen this thing and we had to talk and show them in scripture, then pray with them before they now believe. I tell you this, don't let the devil deceive you one with fear. Say it, I have no fear. I have no fear. Have no, fear. no fear. Perfect love does what? Cast out fear. We love one another. That love is made complete in us. Because we acknowledge and believe and we show that love to our brethren. So you are coming to service and you know that this person is doing one on one inside the room and you do not invite the person to your church, then you don't love that person. The love of Christ is not seen in you then. Some of you think that coming to church is just, oh, this, this is my clique of people. I don't want this person to come and join my clique. You have turned church to your clique and that this person, you don't want this person to be part of it. That's how some of you have turned church too. That's why you don't want some, some people around you to come to your church. And that's the truth. Ah, I touched something. But that's the truth. Some of you in your hostels, in your hostels, you know this. You know this. You know this particular sister. That maybe as in the girls hostel now. You know this particular sister. Two of you are in the same room. This is what she does. But you shut your mouth from telling her that this is wrong. This is not Jesus wise. You want, you still want to keep her as a friend. You want to have, make her get one bad girl for side. So that at least they'll still think I'm cool. What kind of coolness is that? Many of you still think that it is, it is work to be out. Ah, God. Mm, make I no touch on now. You will still come after me anyway, so I'll still touch on it. It's not work to live a life outside of Christ. It's not work to be associated with an unbeliever and not communicate it to that person. It's wickedness. Pure evil. So you will have a friend. Ah, that is that person even your friend. You have a roommate. You have a family member. Well, I have cousins. To be honest with you, once they say, ah, pa, 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 now. I do, I do church. How you do now? Hope say you do pray. Hope say you they know that's the next thing I'll talk to them about. So, it's very few times that they will call me. It's okay that they want to run away from me. Because the world has always, they, Jesus has said it. They will reject They will even hate you for my sake. So, don't be shocked if your roommate hates you because you love Jesus. Ah, you are shocked. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. When they, you fetch water and they pour the water away. Ah, don't be surprised. That even if they need water, you will not come and fetch water for them. Ah, you need water. You put my eye and don't worry, don't worry. Maybe you mistakenly put the water in me. Some of you feel like some of you still feel like that's weak, that's weakness. That I'm, I'm, I'm like, why would I she put my water away? Why should I? Some of you still think of these things as weaknesses. The fact that you show love to the extent, see, you cannot win hatred by showing hatred. You say that I will show you what you show me. I will show you. You think that you when I see some, some of you don't know that I, I enter your school sometimes and, yeah, and I see some of you and I just laugh. I will just pass by with my, with my black, uh, with my black face mask. And somebody has seen me. I will just pass and I will say more and I will just laugh. God gave me an assignment to campuses so I do sometimes prayer work in campuses. I just laugh when I look at some of you. You decided in yourself that you will call Jesus your Lord and Savior and you will open your mouth I said that you waiting, I go show you. No be you. Ah, you did not you did not hand your life to Jesus. It was not Jesus that you met. Salvation was corrupted from the onset. This message might be hard for some of you, but I tell you the truth that at the day I will no longer speak truth in this church, that's the day that God should take me. Because the message, the message in itself that I'm, I was ordained to speak is the truth. And the truth of God's word. So if every day you live your life and you cannot communicate that love that Jesus showed to you, to your neighbor, even when that person is showing hatred to you, then there's a problem with you. 
then there is something you still need to ask the Lord to help you with. That Lord, I find myself still getting seriously angry. Lord, this weight of anger help me. Perfect love casts out fear. Lord, I find myself still afraid. Why? Help me, Lord. And he will show you. He will show you. You want to win against... This person is getting you angry every time. And he's showing that he wants to show you pepper. Show them love. One thing I told my people in NCCF, they will, I will use love and show you pepper. They, uh, Pastor, Pastor Kelly is here. I will, love, no, I will use love and wound you. That's me. It's not like that was easy in the onset though. I've told you here before. Secondary school, somebody give me, I say, I will fight you until I see blood, I will stop. So you know that from God to wash somebody from that extent to this point, do you think that, oh, some pastors became calm like that? Or do you think that they are trying to save the, the prestige or the title of pastor? We are not trying to save any title for anything. This is who we are trying to be like. This is who we are trying to walk like. This is who we want to be like, Jesus. So if at every point in time, it is, see, it is not the job of a pastor to be like Jesus. Okay. Now we are getting somewhere. Oh, you think it's the job of a pastor? Oh, no. It's the job of every believer. Every believer must see Jesus as their mirror. That this is who you are going to be like. This is who you are running to be like. In life, in nature, in speech, in actions, this is who you are walking to be like. And how did Jesus show love to us? You've seen it already. What were the things that he suffered because he said he loved us? You know them already. I've showed you here times without numbers. I've showed you here times without numbers. The same person that they yield their eyes was the same person that was looking at him beside Barabbas and said, no, Jesus is the one that you should keep. The same person that he gave their hands back was the same hand that pointed at him and said, it is Jesus that you should kill. Save Barabbas. The same person that he gave his leg back to walk was the one that walked to that same council and said, I prefer Barabbas. Kill Jesus. The same person that he healed of leprosy was the same person that came and said, I prefer Barabbas. And Jesus was standing and looking at them and said, I still love them. And you saw, you, we even see it in the person of Stephen. Such an amazing deacon. That even at the point of death, they were stoning him. He looked up to heaven and saw Jesus sitting on the throne and said, Father, forgive them. That was the only other person recording in scripture that said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. After Jesus, check scriptures. Do you know what it means to stone someone? They stone you with it. Check the stones that were in ancient Rome. Check the stones that were in Jerusalem then. Check those stones. They were heavy stones. So when you see scriptures that they stoned the apostles, know that when they stoned them, at least the part of their body was dislocated. So you record in scripture that, ah, Apostle Paul came out, after they had stoned him, he came out and walked. It was supernatural. Because there is no how they will stone you with those heavy stones and you will stand up and walk again. Who are you? But he came out, Paul came out, and he continued preaching the gospel. Stephen, they stoned him. He looked up to heaven. Father, forgive them. They don't know. A deacon. So you know the truest definition of love. Even in the height of pain. Some of you think that, oh, ah, when they are showing me so much pain, that that's why I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing this with you. I don't know. Some of you are running away from feeling hurt. I don't want to feel hurt, so I'm just going to detach myself from you. you know? Some of you, are, you want to protect your emotional space. If Jesus protected his emotional space from you, would you be here? I've told you what love is not. It's not emotions. It's not feelings. So you can, I, if I tell you I love you, I know what exactly I'm saying. I know it. I'm not just opening my mouth to utter words. The greatest miracle is not healing the sick or raising the dead. Because the truth about it is that the dead that you raise will still die one day. The greatest miracle is not eyes opening. One day to close and never open again. The greatest miracle is that of salvation. Because life eternal is given. So that's why I say preach the gospel. And you're wondering why is it that always pastor Josh is always talking about preach the gospel. You think that's the greatest miracle. 
Why is it that heaven does not rejoice when Jesus opened the blind eyes? Why is it that heaven is also recorded that, oh, when an apostle came and lame was walking, earth will rejoice because to you it looks like a supernatural activity. It is a supernatural activity. Glory be to God. But what does heaven rejoice? A party is thrown in heaven because one man said to the Lord Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. That all the angels will carry their tambourines and everywhere and begin to dance and rejoice. Ah! This guy don't come. Some of you, your angels have even given up on you. And that's the truth. Imagine your angel going back to God to report you. See, I don't tire. I don't do again. I'm resigning. Give me, give me, Pastor Boy. Leave. Let's exchange. Imagine your angel reporting you to God that you, the assignment that you gave this young man, is using Netflix. Ah, the assignment that you gave this lady. For the past one year, has never opened her mouth to preach the gospel. Her status has been as that of our of business and not Jesus. I know you might not like my words every time. But let these words, let these words of truth from spirit, let it, let it, let it truly enter your spirit today. Some of you, I say this truth, the truth. Your angel has given up, given up on you. Scripture recorded that he will give his angels charge over you. The ones that are in charge over you. They cannot find love in your heart again. They can't. Because you only know how to give 15 naira and you feel okay that, oh, you gave a beggar 15 naira. You feel like, oh, you are a good person. That's not goodness according to God. That's not love according to God. You just, you just, you just became morally satisfied. You just satisfied your goodness ego. Did you, did you hold the man's hand and say that, can you, can I, can I, can I talk to you about Jesus? Then look at your angel standing beside you. say, bad guy, they go, they go. I wish the Lord would open many of your eyes to see what your angels do by your side. I've told you many a time, some of you might not need to believe, it's okay. I was on camp, I was in a retreat for some days and I locked up, they locked the doors. And I saw my angel sitting there. One was in front. One was by the door. The one in front was looking at me. And I looked. I said, I asked him, are you bored? He looked at me. Ah. He looked at the other one by the door. So this guy can see me. I said, are you bored? Some of your angels are bored. Because there's nothing you are doing. Oh, Wulu. Oh, Shisha. You never sent them on an assignment. Have you ever for one day said that my angel, beggar, today must be free because I'm going to camp? You think these words, I'm speaking them out of emotions. No, there is spirit and life coming out from here. It's not just, it's not emotions here. I tell you the truth by God. If you needed, you needed to hear these words. You gave your life to Christ how many years? Till today, there is no record of change in your life. There's no record of steadfastness. There's no record of consistency. There's no record, there's no record of a soul saved through your mouth. Now you open your mouth every day and Lord, I want, Lord, I want. I told you the difference between sons and babies. Babies want what they want, when they want it, how they want it. And you know what sons do. How he wants it, when he wants it. Have you ever asked the Lord that, Lord, how many sons do you require of me today? I will go wherever you send me, no matter the cost. I was coming down from Ikiti, getting, getting down to that place. My whole body was hot, weak and sick. They knew. I sat down inside the car. Lord, I don't think I can go and minister. I said, no, no, I'll give you strength. I handed the mic. That was all. I got to my lay down flat and it was as if I was gone. God gave me strength for the assignment. I tell you this because I want you to understand that God is so, so, he's so mindful. He loves you. But how do you show that you love the Lord? How do you show that you love the Lord? In your class, exam has come. You, are, you call yourself a Christian and you still, you still carry out exam malpractice. You are disgracing the name of the Lord that you bear. The mark of the Holy Ghost that has been upon you, you disgraced it in an exam hall. And you want to stand and say that, oh, I am, I'm called of God. I'm, oh God. Ah, I heard today that before 
in the redeemed Christian church of God, pastors used to flog workers. <laughs> Thank God that uh, <laughs> it does not work that way. Imagine your you, imagine God opened your eyes one day to see your angels. Angels just walk and look at you. You see, you no. <laughs> Some of you have even encountered your angels sometimes and you, you disrespected them. You just struck the person and just left. Because you did not know him. Abraham encountered angels and he was able to discern that, ah, no, 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 no. I'd seen the Lord. Please come into my tent and eat. I said, ah, no, 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 we're just, just passing. No, 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 sir. Come into my tent and eat. Abraham, no stressors. We just we are just passing. Come into. Bow your heads and pray in the spirit, everyone. You know what you need to speak to the Lord on. You know what you need to speak to the Lord on. There are certain messages that it's not, it's 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 the Lord speaking to your heart. That my child, you've been far. You know you've been far. You know it. That I've communicated love to you by sending my son to you. But in what way have you truly said I love you to the Lord? But in just your mouth. In songs. But I've not seen at any point in time that you've gone out. I say, ah, my brother. Have you met the Lord Jesus? These are not just mere words I speak to you today. I speak spirit and life. The Lord is calling you back. Oh. He's calling you back. Many of you have gone so far into activity. That activity has been the driving force. In fact, the reason why most of you now come to church is, is because of the cliques that you have gathered. It is no longer because you seek the Lord. You know what the Lord is speaking to your heart right now. Cry to him. Cry to him. Cry to him. Cry to him. You were on fire before. When you were saved, when you went. <laughs> when you first encountered Jesus, it was you were bubbling with passion that men must know this Jesus that I encountered. But now God cannot find five minutes from your mouth to speak to anybody. Two minutes is even too much. God cannot find it from your mouth. Now you have been so engulfed in ministry. You've been so engulfed in activity. You've been so engulfed that God has not found a space again in your heart to capture your heart for his will to be done. Can you cry to the Lord here? And not just even crying now. That the aftermath of this you're crying today that God will truly know that, oh, there's a change. That when God sees Pelumi, when God sees Sharon, he knows that, oh, these ones are the true terrors. That's your workspace. Since you've been there, you want to be low-key. You don't want them to know that, oh, oh, so that they will not call me SU. So that they will not call me, and this will not call me Jesus. What else will you come with? By whose name will you come? I've told you many times, the day you called him your Lord, you handed over everything to him. But up until today, your desires is still what leads you. There's a problem somewhere. Cry to the Lord. Cry to him. And for many of you who want to, many of you want the, the Lord to be the Lord of your life. You probably have not surrendered before. Or today you want to mark a new commitment, a new covenant, a new work with the Lord. It's okay to lift your hands. It's just you. It's okay. Even if it's just you, that the Lord will find. I see your hands, my sister. Please raise them high. My sisters, I see your hand. My brothers, I see your hand. Raise them high. Shame the devil, raise them high. 
that today marks a new walk with the Lord. That no day, no minutes, no day passes. That on your statuses, on every platform you will have governance over. That God will truly find you useful. Ah! May God never say that, no, this one is not useful. The day you become useless in the hand of God, the devil, you become a useful tool in the devil's hand. Some of you have not even experienced attacks because it looks like the devil, the, the, the devil doesn't see you as a threat. Speak to the Lord. Are you tired already? <laughs> You're tired already. You're not distracted already. Oh God. Lord, have mercy. Has the devil truly gotten you too distracted, too busy, too busy, too busy, too busy for the Lord? You become too busy for the Lord. Uh, but I'm in church, I'm in that department now. Uh, uh, am I not serving? Is it not okay to serve the Lord? Am I not doing this? Am I not doing that? truly find you crying to him now are you tired already can you behold him in front of you can you behold you him standing right in front of you cry to the lord cry to the lord i have no other help but you i'm sorry i've done this by myself i've tried to do it I've been too busy. I have truly been too busy. I've truly been too busy. I thought ministry was all. I thought it all needed me for me to go there and just sing. And that was enough. <laughs> I thought that was all. You required so much more of me. But I was satisfied doing what, what was comfortable for me. Can you truly cry to the Lord now? Forget the distractions. God is seeking your heart again. God is seeking your heart again. Some of you, the last time you were on fire, you can't even remember again. Some of you realize that when it was you, the time you entered that relationship, that fire just went out. Your hand no longer burned for the Lord anymore. You are now more conscious of service. God is seeking your heart again, much more than ever before. God is seeking your heart again much more than ever before that God can you find my heart I have been too busy I loved ministry I loved what it looked like I loved this stage too much I looked like I was on fire but I wasn't you knocked and you sat for me, but I was not there. You were knocking. People thought that I was... Ah! Find me again, Lord. I beg you with all of my heart, don't get distracted. I beg you. I beg you. Don't be a matter right now. Don't get distracted. Fix your eyes on the Lord. I beg you. It's a moment of repentance. And I've said it before. 
the revival truly starts when repentance has been shown. Can God truly find Ketukuman in your heart? Can God truly see a Smith Wiggles word again in you? Can your mouth truly be a weapon for revival? Or do you just look alike? You just look like it, but you are not it. Oh, I know that they've put you under so much pressure. They've shown you so much pepper. <laughs> but can God truly say that, oh, love is found in my son's heart. Love is found in my daughter's heart. Stand to your feet everywhere. Lift your hands to heaven. And say, Lord Jesus. We make this commitment again as a church. As a people. Everywhere, if you are too distracted, I beg you, lift your hands. We make this commitment again as a church. That our gaze will truly be fixed on the Lord. That no woman, no man will have the tyranny of our heart again. That even in a time of intimacy with you, we will never run away from your presence. That when God is truly seeking for our hearts, our mouths to be used to bring many to the saving knowledge of Jesus, it will not be found doing something else. That God will truly find our status worthy enough for him to be posted. Speak in tongues, everyone. 30 more seconds. Just speak in tongues. Just speaking tongues everywhere. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I see many of you crying. I'm not going to even tell you to wipe your tears. Because I, 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 I want to be very sure that the aftermath of these tears would be that you would truly truly gone after the heart of the lord that this will not just be tears because of the service oh it was recorded did our hearts not born when he yet spake can god be found again in his heart can god tell you to leave that job and you will say yes lord that just like our fathers in the faith left all for him can god still find your heart worthy and ready for him or have you gotten too busy i give you 10 more seconds i've said it before that true repentance true revival true revival starts with repentance blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah father we thank you for your word we thank you for the souls that we dedicated their lives to you now we thank you for the hands that have made that covenant and commitment to you that lord that nothing else we have the ability to push us from that love and fellowship with you that never again will it be found that we have become too busy for your way never again will it be found that jesus is no longer so important again never again will it be found that love is not in our hearts lord jesus be glorified in these lives in jesus mighty name we pray can you shake your neighbor and say welcome again just say it welcome again glory be to god can you rejoice everywhere